Um, I would like to start um, by acknowledging uh, the Ngunnawal people um, who are the custodians on the land on which um, I live and work. I want to uh, pay my respects to their elders past and present. Today um, we have a fantastic talk from Amar, tips and tricks for using Cloud Store File Sender and Swan. Now, Amar um, uh, completed his PhD at Charles Darwin University investigating the genomics and transcript omics of paediatric bacterial pathogens. Emma is currently the bio bioinformatician at Vidral, um, uh, who is who's collaborating, who, which is the Hugh Collaborating Centre for Influenza, working on respiratory viruses such as RSV and influenza. This is very interesting. He has worked on a wide range of organi organisms, including RNA sequencing of koala retrovirus, proteomic characterization of jellyfish toxins, human hookworms, and now influenza and RSV. Well, this sounds really interesting. So Amar's um, gonna talk to us today about some of the tips and tricks that he's uh, learnt um, on how to use file sender and swan. All right, over to you, Amar. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Sarah and uh, Karina for the invitation. I really appreciate talking today. I do acknowledge the traditional owners um, of uh, Melbourne and the city around us. Um, and pay respects to the elders past and present. Um, so I'll be honest with you guys, I actually don't have any presentation. Um, I'm just gonna be talking today and I'm gonna be actually um, demonstrating as well what I do. One of the main ways I actually use Cloud Store is uh, to sync all my data and all my information and all my work across multiple different machines and also back it up onto the server. It is absolutely fantastic and i cannot recommend enough uh it's gone i cannot recommend enough using cloud store as your sort of main cloud backup synchronization platform uh don't use dropbox don't use google drive don't use OneDrive. cloud store i can't like i keep telling everyone use cloud store you get one terabyte it's absolutely amazing and it comes with all sorts of crazy amazing features and hopefully um I'll be showing some of them today. Uh, yeah, so one of the main ways I do it, I use um, Cloud Store is to back up all my uh, work, all my projects, everything I do on here. Uh, and that's synced to my computer at home, that's synced to my work computer, my personal laptop, and even sometimes on my phone, so it's fantastic. I wanna point out a tip that most people may not know about with regards to um, Cloud Store is that it actually keeps uh, data for about 30 days. So if you rem if you accidentally delete a file, it'll be in your deleted files. If you um, if you ac if you change a file and you want to go back, you can act you can go in here. Um, I believe it's under details, and you can click on versions. But all the versions will be here, so you can actually uh, get an older version um, that you may want and actually um, bring it back. So that I believe someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it's about I think um, that there's about 60 days worth of retention, and I've got some notes here, um, and then there's 30 day snapshots um, that can go back up to a year, and I think there's also 12 months every 12 months a the cloud store does a snapshot, so absolutely fantastic. The other thing I wanted to mention was collections. Now I don't, I personally don't use collections, but I'm a, I am about to use co um, collections. So it's fantastic for packaging data together, uh, especially for studies. So if you're going to be uploading data to something like Figshare, then packaging it within collections is fantastic. Um, but the main thing I want to talk about today is uh, File Sender, which integrates quite heavily with Cloud Store and Swan, same thing. So it also integrates with Cloud Store. Um, file sender is really, really interesting. So you can send, from what I understand, like uh, an unlimited size files. I haven't actually had any troubles. I've sent a few gig across file sender. Uh, sorry, a few terabytes across file sender, and that's been um, really, really helpful. Something else that's really amazing is you can send vouchers out. And that's kind of the opposite. So instead of sending files, you can get people to send you files. Uh, and that's over here on the left-hand side. So this is really great if you're collaborating with people and um, you need to get really large data off them. So 
if you work with the human data or um, any sequencing, which I do, it can be really tricky sometimes to get data. Uh, you can't put on Dropbox because of you know privacy reasons and ethical reasons. Uh, you can't chuck it up on something like Amazon because that's uh, expensive and tricky. So cloud store uh, vouchers, amazing. So essentially it's just, you enter in the details over here, you, it gets sent out, they send you the link and it appears here and then you download it. I use file sender a lot when I'm trying to share large data and I know this sounds really um, backwards, but <laughs> instead of putting something on the network drive, which sometimes takes a while, I put it on file sender, go to the other computer and download it. For whatever reason, that seems to be faster. I don't know. Um, Something I discovered today actually is that uh, FileSender has an, um, a command line API that you can access. Now that's really, really interesting um, when you consider that data can be generated via Swan and then sent out via FileSender. So there is a command line tool. So if you go into the help, there's actually a FileSender command line tool written in Python. And that's really, really cool. So you can generate data in Swan and then automatically send it out using file sender, super, super cool. Uh, you can drag and drop, you can select. So uh, yeah, like I said, I use file sender a lot. The main thing I'm gonna focus on today is uh, actually Swan. Um, within the Swan, you can actually open up uh, notebooks of um, different programming languages or that use different programming languages. I'm probably a little strange. I don't like notebooks. Um, I prefer just using the terminal writing the script and then executing it using either bash or running it locally in R. Uh, if you like notebooks and you use them, go right, use them, um, feel free to use them. They're actually really good. I just don't personally prefer them. Uh, as a mind for petition, I use the, the Linux environment a lot. So this is very uh, comfortable for me, but I realize for some people it could be quite intimidating. But I think it's really, really good that you learn Linux and Bash, it's fantastic. Before I begin with the terminal, um, what happens in Swan is that when you launch a Swan session, as far as I understand, you have, a, you have an instance essentially that gets deleted if you close a terminal or if you close Swan. But you still have access to all your cloud store um, information as you can see here. So what I generally do is I make a directory that we're gonna be using. And so for the session, I usually execute everything in here and point all the output uh, within this folder. Um, something else I noticed, which is actually really cool. Uh, if you do HTOP, it shows you the number of CPUs. And amazingly, there's 36 cores that you can actually access. Super, super cool. Um, so it's actually a really decent instance uh, and Sometimes when, if my main computer is actually running a big job, I sometimes use um, Cloud Store Swan to continue working without actually affecting my uh, main job. So super, super cool. And oh, the other thing is the, the amount of RAM. That's a lot of RAM, 252 gig. Um, I still haven't used up all of it, but it's a lot. Yeah, so the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, with regards to, um, R packages. So you actually have access to R um, and CRAN just from the command line. So all you have to do, um, the first bit of instructions is that you have to actually change your path where things are installed. What I've actually done is I've created a directory where I store all my R packages that I use in Swan. Um, if you have the R packages on your computer, do not transfer them over to Swan because on Linux, they're actually compiled for the operating system. And if you, for example, if you're on Mac, like I am, it could actually uh, interfere. So you have to install your packages all over again, but you have to add this first. What this does is that it tells R to install all the packages in the first directory, which is essentially a hidden R folder. And so all you, all you have to do is go install dot packages, uh, for example, dplyr. And I'm pretty sure I've installed this. It'll ask you for a CRAN session. 
We're just going to cancel that because I've already installed it. To exit out of here, you just press Control D. I'm not going to save the environment. Okay, the way I usually um, structure my projects is I have all, the, all my scripts in one folder, and then I have a sort of master script that will run everything. Uh, what you need to do is modify these scripts so that they actually include um, the previous command, uh, something along these lines. Um, I'm going to save that uh, there. Uh, and so every single other script as well. Every single other script also contains the exact same thing. Um, something else I use is actually uh, Pac-Man Pload, which is a really nice package that handles uh, loading multiple libraries in a single line. But the other thing it does is that it will handle the installation for you. So if the if one of these packages is not found, uh, it'll install it. Can you can you put cron jobs onto this? The cron is on here. Um, what are you thinking, actually? I'm intrigued what you're thinking. I was just, uh, I, I, um, yeah, I was just quite surprised by what you're showing and how much, is yeah. that, how much power of flexibility is here. And it just yes. struck me is, could you actually time some of these analysis scripts that you want to do? The limitation is that the terminal, the, the instance that you launch, um, seems to have a half-life. If you keep it open, I haven't had it die on me. So you can have it open overnight. Uh, but... I do wonder what um, Arnett would think if you have these cron jobs running. Uh, yeah, it's interesting thought. Something else I should probably point out is that, yeah, the version of R, even though it doesn't say it here, is actually 3.6, uh, where is it, or 3.5. Um, so there could be some conflict with the, uh, if you use some new packages that rely on specific versions of R, you could potentially have a conflict. If you use Python to install um, packages or modules, you have to use pip, but you use the exp explanation mark to actually install it. Yeah, so that would work. The last thing I do, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is um, executing R in the terminal. Um, R is kind of weird. You have to use R script to execute your scripts. And I've got to find out where I am. Okay, so my main script is called rsv report underscore run dot R. And to execute it, you run R script and just the script's name. Uh, essentially, the, this script uh, uses an R markdown uh, and a bunch of other scripts um, that R markdown will then uh, rely on and execute to uh, generate a PDF report. So at the center, we do a lot of surveillance. Uh, on RSV and sorry on influenza and now we're also doing RSV uh, so we have to generate these reports for the centers that provide us viruses and so this is a fantastic uh, platform to actually run these scripts uh, especially when I'm away from uh, the computer and, I, and the boss wants something changed last minute I can run everything within Swan on cloud store and then send it out so it's absolutely fantastic so this is this one session I mentioned previously. So this session, uh, this, this folder actually disappears or the contents of it get deleted once you close that terminal. So yeah, so this is a real life report that was generated within Swan. Uh, and all of this, everything you see here was actually generated in R Markdown, um, including these uh, phylogenetic, actually phylogenomic trees um, for RSV. Something very cool is because you have access to the internet um, and I haven't really found any restrictions, you can, um, you can actually download things from the internet if you need to, uh, especially if you've got a slow connection, you can put it onto the cloud store um, cloud and then later on sync it up with your personal machine if, you, if need be, or you could just leave it uh, and process it within um, the cloud store system. So something very, very cool is uh, you, can, you can dub get things. So I want to test out the speed at which you can download that. And that's, that's, that's good. That's getting better. I generally do download very large files from things like NCBI, lots of genomic data to build uh, local databases that we use. So 
having access to this is is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Amar. Um, that was really interesting. I learned I learned some stuff. Mind you, I don't code much these days, but um, it was really Thank interesting. You. I've never seen a demonstration of the terminal before.